If you're not sure what kind of car this is, you're not alone. These tiny metal capsules with wheels are called belly tanks or lakesters, and they're a major part of hot rod culture. So where does that strange looking bodywork come from? The short answer, the sky. Following World War II, U.S. junkyards and surplus stores were filled with an abundance of leftover warplane parts, which included plenty of drop tanks, or belly tanks. Belly tanks were supplemental gas tanks strapped to World War II fighter planes to help boost their notoriously poor range. However, after the war, racers found another use for them. America's gearheads quickly began transforming these discarded fuel cells into miniature speed demons and racing them out on dry lake beds, hence the name Lakesters. The belly tank was a natural because it was an extra fuel tank attached to the bottom of a P-38 fighter plane. So it was already proven to be aerodynamic. So it was the perfect shape for land speed racing. One of the most famous belly tankers belonged to Alex Exidius, founder of the iconic SoCal Speed Shop. Owned today by rare car collector and enthusiast Bruce Meyer, this legendary Lakester still looks just as good as it ever did. The top speed that this car attained was 198 miles an hour, and that was piloted by Alex Exidius. When we found the belly tank, it was very much complete. It had the original interior, original dash, and all the original metal and suspension. So it was all there, nothing had to be fabricated, but it still took a year of research with Alex Exidius and Wally Parks working with Pete Shapuris, who restored the car, to make it what you see today. And as accurate as it is, it is 100% the original car. Finding a belly tank in the 40s and 50s was very, very easy. Today, not so easy. That hasn't stopped plenty of car builders in shops and garages today from constructing their own bullet-shaped racing machines. Uh, Sunrise Racing Division is our take on preserving vintage hot rods, especially the different eras of racing. Building our car took us about eight months. The process was first finding these tanks, which are becoming harder and harder to find. The next step was sending it to Steve Pugner in Virginia. My buddy, uh, he, he does great metal work and he's the one who did all the metal work on this car. The biggest challenge that we faced was one, me and Steve were pretty tall guys. Uh, so it's trying to fit us into the back of that tank was a challenge. And of course, fitting a big motor, which ends up sticking out, was a bit of a challenge too. I think belly tankers are still uh, as popular as they've ever been. There's more and more guys in their garages building belly tanks that I, than I've ever seen before, I think. Uh, belly tanks were prolific back then, and some people used them to build land speed records. Today, it's not so easy. You don't see belly tanks laying around, and the few that were used for land speed racing are few and far between, but they still do exist, and they're being held by enthusiasts and people that understand the importance of it.